In this video we're going to look at the anatomy of waves and how we describe the features of waves. We're going to do a little bit of revision on the types of waves and then we're going to get into the anatomy including crests and troughs, wavelength, amplitude, frequency, period and velocity. Firstly to clear up a few terms, a wave is a disturbance of a medium that carries energy, energy being the important thing here. The medium is the thing that the wave travels through and the travelling through is referred to as propagation. And from the previous video you remember that we have two types of waves. We have transverse waves as well as longitudinal waves which are sometimes referred to as compression waves. The direction of particle movement in transverse waves is perpendicular to the direction of propagation, so either left and right or up and down, while longitudinal waves, the direction of particle movement is parallel, so it's backwards and forwards in the plane that the wave is propagating. An example of a transverse wave would be secondary earthquake waves, and primary earthquake waves are longitudinal. Uh, also longitudinal are sound waves, which we talked about in the previous video. We're now going to look at the anatomy of a wave. Now the anatomy of the wave is ways that we describe waves that are common to all waves so that we can compare them. Now obviously the medium is going to change depending on the type of wave, but what I'm going to do is use water waves as uh, the medium water uh, so that we can actually see and visualize these properties. Okay, so if we have our wave going up and down like this, and this is obviously a very uh, ideal stylized view of what a wave would look like, but if you can imagine this as sets of waves coming in onto the beach. So the first thing that we need to identify are the crests and the troughs. Now the crests are the highest point of the wave, above the midpoint, and the troughs are the lowest point below the midpoint. Now the midpoint is the point at which the medium would be if nothing was occurring. So you could imagine here if it was a still day and there weren't any waves, the midpoint would be the dotted line. So therefore the crest is the highest point above the midpoint. We have two crests there the trough, the lowest point below the midpoint, and we have two troughs, so the crest and the trough. Now this is pretty easy to visualize with transverse waves because they do move perpendicular up and down uh, to the propagation. It's a little bit harder to visualize with compression waves or longitudinal waves. But what we mean here is where we have a crest corresponds with a compression and a trough corresponds with a rare fraction. So if we're looking at uh, the particles and maybe we're graphing how many particles are in a certain square or a certain area, the crest would tell us that there's more particles in that area, or a compression, and the trough would say that there's less in another area. So that's how we sort of visualize the difference between compression waves uh, and transverse waves and can get them onto some sort of common ground so that we can compare them. Now the wavelength is the length of a wave, its symbol is lambda, which is a Greek letter, and you measure it from the crest of one wave to the crest of the next wave, so from crest to crest. You can also measure it from trough to trough, uh, and you'll get the same thing. Now the wavelength can be very, very small, it could be in the nanometers for visible light, for example, or it could be in the very, very large with some radio waves uh, having a wavelength up in the kilometers. Also, a wave that has a short wavelength has high energy and a wave that has a long wavelength has low energy. So short, high, long, low. So we can see here, if we measure from cr crest to crest, we have the wavelength there, the lambda, and if we measure from trough to trough, we get another wavelength, both of these being the same size. OK, 
Okay, next we'll look at the amplitude. Now the amplitude is the height of the wave from the rest position. So to look at this, we've got, we can either measure it from the rest position to the crest or from the rest position to the trough. Now the temptation here is to measure the height from crest to trough. Don't do that, that actually gives you twice the amplitude. It's just one or the other. Now a few more words that we have, and these ones are not really something that you can graph and you can show. We're not in a uh, stationary two-dimensional picture anyway. But the first one is frequency, and the frequency is how many waves are passing a point in a second. And this is measured in hertz, where hertz is how many waves there are in a second. Now the period is the inverse of the frequency, and it's the time in which it takes one complete wave to move past a fixed point. So for example, if you had a wave that had a frequency of 2 hertz, the period, so two waves were moving in one second, the period of half a second is for one wave. And finally, velocity is how fast the wave moves or propagates through the medium. And now all electromagnetic radiation moves at the speed of light. And the reason for this is that light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. So it all moves at the same speed, and we call that the speed of light. Now these properties that we've just talked about relate to each other, and we can work out one if we know a couple of other ones uh, by using the formula velocity equals frequency times wavelength. So this is where it comes in handy knowing that electromagnetic radiation moves at the speed of light because it means that the velocity is fixed and if we know the frequency or the wavelength we can work out the other one. In this video we've recapped the two different types of waves, transverse waves and longitudinal waves and we've then looked at the anatomy of a wave as in ways we can describe a wave in common terms. We've talked about crests and troughs, wavelength being the distance from crest to crest, and the symbol being lambda, amplitude being the height from rest position to crest, the frequency being how many waves pass a point in a second, the period being how long it takes for a wave to pass a point, and velocity being the speed at which the wave propagates.